Hi, I'm Duncan Haldane of Princeton University. So I'd like to tell you about a very simple toy model that I invented many years ago when I was at the University of California in San Diego in order to demonstrate that the quantum Hall effect could occur without needing strong magnetic fields or Lando levels and instead could just occur when you have a standard block band structure with broken time reversal invariance but no magnetic flux through the system. So this is what's now called the churn insulator or the quantum anomalous Hall effect and it may be considered as the precursor to today's time reversal invariant topological insulators which were discovered as a generalization of the toy model that I'm going to present to you today. So the starting point of the model is a model for graphene with nearest and next nearest uh, neighbor hopping on a honeycomb structure which has two sites in the unit cell which I'm going to call the, the A site and the B site. You can see it on the screen behind me. So as you probably know graphene is a semi-metal where the conduction and valence bands touch at two distinct Dirac points which are these points in the corners of the Brillouin zone, number one and number two, or number one and number two, the equivalent. And, uh, and the states near the Fermi level are then described by a 2D version of a massless Dirac model, a field theory. So I'm going to take the electrons to be spinless, which really means that they're fully spin polarized. Now the gapless Dirac points are topologically protected but they're only protected if both spatial inversion and time reversal invariance is present. So the inversion symmetry exchanges the A and the B uh, orbitals. So the, has these inversion points marked in red here in the center of the sides in the center of the unit cell. And, uh, and it's broken if the A and the B sites are occupied by different atoms as they are in the gap semiconductor boron nitride. So what I wanted to do was to break time reversal symmetry without breaking any of the spatial symmetries of the model. So the way to do this is to introduce second complex second neighbor hopping. So real second neighbor hopping is in principle always present and it in fact destroys a unphysical particle hole symmetry of the model which where you only keep first neighbor hoppings present. It's, this is okay because particle hole symmetry is not a symmetry of real graphene. However, to break the time reversal symmetry, I made the second neighbor ho hopping complex. Okay. So second neighbor hoppings are either clockwise or anti-clockwise relative to the six-fold rotation axis at the center of the unit cell. So I give all the clockwise second neighbor hopping amplitudes an amplitude equal to T, a complex number, and the anti-clockwise ones are its complex conjugate T star. So the fact that forward and backward scattering uh, hopping in the direction of this arrow are not equivalent to each other is a symptom of time reversal break. So when a gap opens, the Dirac points are now modeled by a massive Dirac equation. And a key point is that the mass term in the Dirac equation, the sigma z term, is chiral, which means it has a handedness. It depends on the relative handedness of x plus iy. So when inversion symmetry is broken, the two Dirac points are still related by time reversal symmetry, which reverses the handedness. So the masses of the two Dirac points in that case have opposite signs, and there's no net chirality in the problem. But in the other case, when time reversal symmetry is broken, the two Dirac points are still related by spatial inversion symmetry, which in two dimensions preserves the handedness, and the two massive Dirac points have masses of the same sign. So to see what happens at the edge when this gap opens, it's very useful to look at the zigzag edge of the simple nearest neighbor hopping model which does have this unphysical particle hole symmetry. In this model, because of particle hole symmetry, there is an exact zero mode edge state, an exact zero energy edge state on the zigzag edge, and it lives in one third of the Brouin zone and it connects the projections of the two different Fermi points from the bulk, Fermi uh, Dirac points into the bulk onto the edge Brillouin zone. So these edge states arise on this edge 
because there is an excess number of B sites, one for every three edge unit cells relative to the A sites, and the particle hole symmetry in the bulk requires equal numbers of A sites and B sites. So any excess, any local excess of one type of site over the other at the edge appears as zero modes. So when the gap opens, the edge state has to remain attached to the conduction band or the valence band at each of the two projections of the Dirac points. So there are four choices. The, uh, if both connections are to the same band, as in these two examples on the left, this both connected to the conduction band or both connected to the valence band, this is the case where the gap was opened by breaking of inversion symmetry. Nothing special. But if the time reversal symmetry was the one that was broken, the edge mode becomes a conduit connecting the conduction and valence bands because one edge is attached to the projection of the, uh, the, the Dirac point in the upper band and the other end is connected to the projection of the Dirac point in the lower band. Okay. So this becomes a conduit that allows uh, conduct, uh, allows spectral flow of states between the conduction and valence bands. So this is a, a fundamental property that's required by the chiral anomaly of the, of the quantum Hall effect. So if the magnetic flux through the bulk region here is increased by one Dirac flux quantum H over E, then one state must be transferred either from the conduction band to the valence band or from the valence band to the conduction band, depending on the sign of this quantum Hall effect. So to make this transfer of states from, from uh, conduction to valence band possible, the chiral edge state must exist and must propagate in one direction. So it gives you this, um, this conduit that allows the states to flow between the bands. So in the bulk, this anomaly is connected with a net non-zero churn number of the occupied bulk bands. So the churn number is given by the integral, it's an integer, which is given by an integral of the block state Berry curvature in the Bruin zone. And it determines two fundamental chiral anomalies, chiral quantum anomalies of the problem, which one of which is a failure of the, the charge conservation law of the edge state without taken by itself without reference to the bulk the electric charge conservation law and the other one is the failure of the conservation of momentum parallel to the edge if you don't take into account the bulk so these are the quantum anomalies which are, are fundamental and give you a topological index and in the case of these non-interacting uh, fermion system they're both equal to the churn number of the occupied bands <laughs>